Hey everybody, my name is Ryan Malkin. I'm an attorney in the alcohol beverage industry. Today we're going to talk about how to start a distillery. The first thing you're going to do is certainly form your company, whether it's an LLC or a corporation is um, a discussion for another day and oftentimes something to speak with your accountant about. So you have your company and you now are going to want to try to file for your trademarks. The trademark process is a little bit lengthy, but not that complicated. The hardest part about the whole thing is finding a name in this crowded space. The best names are oftentimes going to be the ones that are unique and didn't mean anything prior to you coming up with it. So think of you know Google or Yahoo, things like that that didn't mean anything until those companies brought the meaning to it. Uh, within the alcohol space, it's oftentimes that people will come up with generic names, you know, the name of their city or something like that, which are harder things to trademark. Now you're going to need to find a location. And the hardest part about the location is the zoning. You want to make sure that it's zoned appropriately for obviously manufacturing uses. And this can be complicated in, in more crowded um, cities. There are oftentimes exceptions and, and variances that you can look into, but you're going to want to find a space and keep in mind the that in your rental agreement, if you're not buying the property, your lease, that you should call out the purpose, right? So this is going to be used as a distillery because the regulators will often look at that. And if it didn't call out the use, that can potentially be a delay or an issue. Then you want to consider the license type that you're going after, right? So there's different types of distillery or rectification licenses. So if you're going to just blend product that you brought in that, and you're not going to distill anything on your own, then that would be blending or rectifying. But oftentimes the state privileges that go along with a distillery don't come with that, right? So if you want to have a distillery, especially if it's going to be in more of a metropolitan area and you want to have a tasting room and you want people to come by and buy bottles, then you're going to usually need to have a craft distilling or some other distilling license. So you will actually need a still and then you're going to get those privileges. Like as an example, in New York, you can have and on-premise adjacent to the distillery as part of those craft privileges. You're going to have to buy a still and file for your federal permits and the serial number of all of your equipment will come along with your permit or, or rather be applied for with your permit. And you're gonna do your state permits in addition to your federal permits. And from there, you're gonna think about distribution and sales. So if you're within your state, that you're, if you're only selling within the state that your distillery is, Sometimes states allow you to do self-distribution where you can sell on your own. And sometimes you have to use a third party distillery. And then as you expand into the other states, you have to think about getting various permits or registrations to sell into those other states. So for instance, if you're going to sell into Illinois from, let's say, New York, then you need to get the appropriate permit to appoint your distributor in that other state. So none of this is all that complicated. It's just a lot of administrative work, certainly a lot of industry specific contracts and certain we or other attorneys that are familiar with the industry can help there. And you always wanna make sure you're um, being compliant with the regulations too. So we offer distillery visits where we come and make sure that your diagrams and all of the f information that you have provided to TTB is as it says it was in, you know, in, in actuality, right? So you say one thing to TTB, and we come there and we look and it's you know completely different, that, that can be a problem. So when you're doing your licensing process, you're gonna do the federal licensing and state licensing as well. And on, once you get your federal license, the great thing is that you can start filing for your formulas and, and label approvals or your COLAs because every formula and label has to be approved by TTB. So you're gonna to wanna to get on that on the earlier side. So you always just wanna be mindful of the regulations and filings that you need to take care of on a monthly basis and quarterly basis based on both federal and state rules. If you have any questions about any of these things, always feel free to reach out. Thank you.